Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Regal Podcast with me, Jordan Lewis, and my good friend, Harry Kutras. Today, we are joined by John Bates, who is a mindset and confidence coach who has massively grown his social media following on TikTok and Instagram recently. So, first of all, John, how are you doing? Yeah, um, I'm doing well, thanks, Jordan. Uh, thanks for having me on. Awesome. Um, yeah, as you said, I'm into, I, I focus on mindset and confidence coaching. So do you want to give a little bit of an intro about what specifically that means, what kind of thing you do on a day-to-day basis for that and kind of why you got into it in the first place? Yeah, sure. So um, what I mean by that is um, a big thing I believe in is I hate the phrase, fake it till you make it. I absolutely hate that phrase. Um, I think it's the completely wrong way about um, developing confidence, the completely wrong idea about confidence in the first place. I think having that... um, fake it it's just you build this fake version of yourself that should be confident and then you're always living in fear and you get this anxiety of being found out people finding out who you really are yeah. and that's where i think that fake it till you make it does not work you're building on rocky foundations you get found out and that confidence is gone i believe in taking small steps building authentic confidence becoming comfortable being yourself becoming comfortable dealing with fear and using that to grow and become more confident every day. That's what the kind of confidence I believe in and that's the kind of confidence that I believe lasts um, and doesn't take a hit and suddenly all crumble. So that's what I like to focus on, building real authentic confidence, um, not trying to be someone else, just embracing who you are, your strengths and your weaknesses and using both of them to grow in life and connect with other people. I find that those weaknesses is where, are where the connections are really built. That makes a lot of sense. Sounds really, really good. Um, why did you get into the confidence mindset sort of niche specifically? Is there kind of something in your past, like a story that you've kind of got that is your reason why almost, that you, the reason why you got into this industry? Yeah, so um, what happened was, was um, I found myself living in, in constant fear and living up to other people's expectations, um, living life on other people's terms, uh, making decisions to make other people happy rather than myself. Um, And my biggest example of that is when I first went to uni. Um, I now study sports science, but that wasn't the case in my first year. Um, I actually originally picked um, law to study at uni. Um, And shortly after being there, I realized that was completely the wrong path for me. I didn't like it at all. I had no interest in it, no passion for it. And from there, um, I really struggled. I really struggled. I was trying to live up to these expectations that nobody really had, but I believe people had. Um, And when it came to wanting to change my mind and start living on my terms, making my own decisions, doing the things that make me happy and make me fulfilled, um, that's where I really struggled because I wasn't confident or comfortable enough to come out to friends family and say this isn't the path for me i want to change mm-hmm. i need to do something that that resonates with me that feels good that i enjoy and that i know i can serve people well with um so for me a huge step was developing and building the confidence in the first place to change that course um to write to the union and say look i want to change courses to then go to my parents and say this isn't working i need to make my own decision now um, I'm don't I, I'm not caring what anyone else thinks. This is what I want to do. And for me, that was the first major decision that I ever made like that. The first decision that I was making on my own terms, um, without any external influence at all. And so for me, that's where it all where it all came from. The idea of mm-hmm. the authentic confidence. The idea of improving that mindset so that you're living on your own terms and you're not living up to these expectations and influence of other people. Makes a lot of sense. And it sounds like you definitely made the right decision because ultimately it is a decision for you as opposed to trying to live up to these external expectations, as you kind of said. So what are some of the biggest positive benefits that you've kind of found, these positive side effects, sorry, that you found of taking control, taking responsibility, being more confident and making decisions for yourself? I think the biggest thing is... um you lose the need for external validation. Um, 
it's so easy to start seeking approval from so many people now. Um, normally, I know people have had it growing up from family, from friends, in person. Uh, now it's even it's even bigger. You go online, you post a picture on Instagram, and you're expecting comments, you're expecting likes, and you start getting into the pattern and the rhythm of judging yourself based on a number. If you get 100 mm -hmm. likes, you're worth 100 likes. If somebody's got 1,000 likes, they're worth 1,000 likes. And that's the completely wrong way of looking at things. But yet, nowadays, it's so easy to get caught up in that. Everyone wants that kind of viral video. Everyone, want, everyone wants to just have that overnight success. Um, and it's all because of this external kind of noise, this external influence. Um, you made to think what success is. Um, that ties into all of it. Because I think the biggest success is overcoming yourself inside and being comfortable with mm -hmm. who you are. That that's ultimately success. Once you've got those foundations, you're confident. You block out everything outside. You know in your core what you want to do, and you have the confidence in yourself to go and achieve that. It's so much easier to make these decisions. Those decisions you make then, they're aligning with your core. You're confident enough to make those decisions because you're living life on your terms. And from there, people around you well, they'll just accept that and if they don't well <laughs> they're probably not meant to be around you then anyway yeah yeah makes a lot of sense to be fair sounds like you've obviously got that strong mindset that i know that harry and i have talked about in a lot of past episodes um you talked initially about building authentic confidence over building this fake it till you make it kind of mantra what for you personally and equally, how can others start building this authentic confidence from the very, very first steps to getting to where you are now, I am now and Harry is now? I honestly think one of the first steps in doing that is is a detox from social media. It would be one of the first steps. Go away from social media for, or, or at least limit your use of social media for maybe three months. In that time, really start thinking about where you are what you're currently doing in life and think does that really resonate with me is that something in the future when I look back on that I'm gonna say yeah I, I lived life to the fullest I, I really lived if it's if that's not the case then there's definitely changes that need to be made and so during that three months the biggest thing you can do is go and explore go and discover and, and experience new things get to know what you actually like without the influence of social media without the influence of other people stuff that actually resonates with you um, that you're choosing to go and do it's like when you ask people what you're interested in <clears throat> what you're passionate about people will always um, have um, such standard answers such general generalized answers and being able to say something more specific like for me if somebody asks me what do I enjoy I enjoy golf but I don't just stop there I enjoy golf at the driving range in Greenwich that's how specific I can get because that's something that really resonates with me that's not saying I'm doing it for a job but I know I enjoy that it's been mm -hmm. able to get that specific with exactly what you're passionate about and then going from there and being able to apply that to your life being able to start experiencing the things you enjoy and just that constant um, process um, will allow you to kind of uh, gauge where your confidence is going to come from just from uh, pursuing activities that you enjoy um, and accepting that you enjoy them it doesn't matter what other people think if you enjoy them go and do them and keep doing them and that confidence is just going to build and you're going to meet people that enjoy the same things sounds like a very positive uh, route to go down harry you have a question yeah um just where's the one of the inspirations who are your inspirations in terms of this kind of methodology that you've built up? It sounds a lot like you're talking at times almost like Freud and the, the shadow self and incorporating it. Um, I hear bits of other, I'm not going to use the word gurus, but kind of so-called gurus on the internet. I'm hearing kind of a lot more detailed versions of kind of the tidbits they kind of give out. So just, I'm curious, who are your inspirations, would you say? I'd say one of my biggest inspirations, um, especially at the start, was um, Tony Robbins. Um, just the way I've seen him in certain events he's been to, I've seen the um, videos of it, the way he talks and the way he, when he's just standing there, that 
power he has and it's it's just that confidence in himself the way he can talk to people get them to open up get them to start seeing that there's more out there in life just purely through words purely through what well, deeper than words through his speech he, he conveys so much so much power so much um, authenticity as well because he's not afraid to be who he is and he's not afraid to tell people that they should just be who they are as well telling people that if they take care of themselves they get used to who they are they get to know who they are there can be so much more out there for them so that was one of my biggest inspirations and just by hearing that it really made me shift my focus from I should do this to be successful to if I want to be successful then I should just do what I enjoy and um, enjoy being myself as well interesting very interesting I know that you also well am I correct in saying that you've also had some mentoring from Jason Capital yeah so I did one of his um, courses actually um, social media boss that's where some of my um, well when in, in lockdown when it all first started I did want to use that time productively look into business and that seemed like a good option at the time um, mm -hmm. it's kind of social media marketing and because it's kind of trendy I thought all right I can, I can get into this um, I know people make money with it I know it's it works maybe it'll be all right I'll give it a go my original plan was um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into it quickly make money quickly and that'll be it it's gonna be an easy process um, just going through that process I learned so much that it's not that simple um, you can't just send a few messages and expect people to want to buy from you straight away it, it doesn't work like that um, but that was a huge learning curve for me going from thinking you can just post a few things on social media send a couple of messages over uh, DMs and you're gonna make sales um, it's unrealistic expectations Jason Capital has that influence and he also um, kind of preaches stuff about you know being yourself I know he does a lot of uh, bioenergetics and kind of state and I think it, it, that comes into it a lot um, if you want to do anything any kind of business I thought I think that one of the biggest things is making sure you're passionate about that in the first place which I wasn't too much for social media marketing but I think before you get to the stage of wanting to pursue the business side of it you really need to get that state work mindset work down um, making sure you've got got the courage the confidence to take on challenges on the way because it is not an easy journey it is not an easy journey at all you get um, you get some amazing achievements and it means a lot when you <clears throat> you know when you make your first sale when you reach a certain amount of people on a, on a post or something like that but the side people don't show you is is the lows and they're huge learning experiences sometimes you're gonna get knocked knocked down so low and you might feel like giving up I know I've been there um, even a few weeks ago things weren't I got too caught up in the numbers and things just I was judging myself off those numbers but that's where it really tests you and you really need to develop the right mindset and the right perspective on all of this stuff otherwise you are going to get beaten down it's just learning to be able to prepare for that a step at a time so when these challenges come your way you can overcome them and um, then in the future if anything like it happens you're already prepared you're building those foundations so that you can start taking on bigger and bigger challenges and that's in business life relationships it, uh, it applies to all areas yeah yeah definitely I know that when you're talking about state control I use state control a lot I usually use it in terms of going for a walk to reset my state and energy levels and also with music I'll listen to a certain album or artist or song to get me into the right kind of frame of mind Harry you use some state control as well don't you or am I mistaken yeah no I, I use state control probably about six different times a day depending on what state <laughs> I need to put myself into but just really quickly, for the listeners who maybe don't understand what state control is, John, would you give a definition for us just so they can have some idea what we're talking about? Yeah, sure. Um, so the way I'd um, define state control is, um, in simple terms, it's just breaking um, your regular pattern in a way that allows you to break that chain of your normal behavior 
and essentially change your state. So you could be um, about to go on, on stage and speak. You're not in the frame to do that yet. So what you need to do is change your pattern. Um, I know Jason Capital when he does it, he does things like barking. Um, as mad as it sounds, it completely breaks that pattern. It completely shocks your brain and your body. And suddenly you've, you've got this energy from nowhere and then you're ready to do something different. You're not in that mindset of um, relaxation. Suddenly that boost has come and you're ready to get into a state for something else. So it's just shifting that state um, to suit the activity that, that you want to perform. Yeah, so it's just having a little ritual, a little routine, a, a few kind of steps you go through that changes your emotions, your mindset, everything just shifts into almost like a you think of a, an athlete they have certain like pre-match routines they listen to a certain song say uh, floyd mayweather he gets his left hand wrapped then the right hand wrapped then the gloves are on certain song on repeat for the next 20 minutes doesn't say a word until he gets down to the ring i don't know if that's true but say for example that's the case that for him is that state control because it's right as soon as these steps activate the brain switches straight into let's knock a motherfucker out mode rather than let's chat to my wife mode and you need to be able to be able to control when you switch in and out of these things and outside of athletics and outside of kind of competitive sports or switching into sales mode or whatever it might be or on stage like you use the example it's also you don't want to be in exactly the same mood when you're with your child or when you're with your partner as you are when you're with your buddies so you will actually already have these state breaks in place maybe you start talking with a slightly different accent or you start swearing slightly more or less or you, you dress up a certain way all of these things can be state control um, rituals that you don't even realize you're doing but taking conscious control over it means you can kind of control your emotion at all time so you can get yourself really ramped up and go right killer mode or you can calm yourself <laughs> all the way down and go right time to just chill out and sleep and it's having that almost hypnotic mind control ability over yourself Awesome. yeah i use yeah. it all the fucking time <laughs> yeah i was gonna say yeah you said like you use it like six times a day to get yourself in different states um so yeah, what, what are you what clock. are you doing specific the clap yeah see i do that before podcasts because it really like wakes me up or sometimes i'll do like a full body shake out um and then it just kind of wakes me up uh what, what are you kind of doing john specifically like if you can give a couple of examples i think um one of the biggest ones for me, I, I know so many people use it and there, there's so much debate over whether it's useful or not. But because I like to work out in the morning, I get up, I work out instantly that's boosting my energy. That's that's putting me in a like an energetic frame from, from the get-go. And then I have a shower after that and it's always on cold. I get in there, that cold shock as well. That yeah. instant hit in the morning of exercise and a cold shower... I don't know the science behind it or anything like that. I know there's huge debate over it, but just that I, can't, I don't allow myself to lay there, lounge around straight away. The blood's flowing. I'm shocking my body and it's suddenly ready for the day. And it, it's like a basically like an activation. I think if you think you sleep, you recharge, but you need to turn yourself on. You need to activate. Otherwise you're just going to stay in that charging mode. Um, so yeah, for me, it's when I get up to really start the day, exercise just to get the blood flowing um wake really wake yourself up and then that cold shower it's just something about it gets your breathing kind of going um shocks your body and then because you've just got up and got on you're suddenly ready you're thinking right what's next what's next um so that kind of system shock as i say i know there's a lot of debate over the cold shower thing but personally i find i find that that really there's nothing that shocks me quite like that yeah, that's fair enough. Jordan, uh, you did the whole cold shower thing. What are your thoughts on it? <laughs> so I know ultimately it's obviously down to what works for you. So if cold showers work for you, then fantastic. Obviously go for that. I tried cold showers every day for a month and I hated my life <laughs> so much. Um, I see what I know what you mean about when you say you get that shock, but it just made me hate showers. Um, and it just made me hate getting up in the morning because then I was like, okay, well, now I've got to get up and get in the shower. Great. Um, so it kind of had the opposite effect for me. It made me want to lay in bed. So it doesn't work for me. Um, but equally, again, if it works for you, that's fantastic. And just keep using that. Like the music works for me. The cold showers work for you. 
whatever Harry does works for him. It's about finding what works uniquely to you. So, um, but yeah, my verdict, as you kind of said, there's debate about whether cold showers work. I can't stand the fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, useful if your your hot water breaks at some point, though. Useful to have that skill as such. <laughs> Yeah, so I think what we've learned from this is cold showers work really well so long as you're not mentally weak like Jordan is apparently <laughs> and you're able to power through adversary, adversary sorry, and not just turn around and go, oh, it's a bit cold. I'm just going to stay in bed instead. If you're the kind of person who actually has the ability to power through difficult things, cold showers are great. Um, but it's all just how you psychologically anchor it. So if you know about operant conditioning or anything like that, um, it's Pavlovian conditioning essentially use those forms of conditioning, you anchor that a thing to a specific emotional state you're in, and then by going through that process, you reach that emotional state kind of on autopilot. I can't believe you just shamed me into taking cold showers again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get a much. message from me. So honestly, we'll do a podcast episode in like two weeks' time, why Jordan got back into cold showers, and it would be because Harry shamed me publicly. <laughs> I didn't so, uh, it. That's I mean, entirely your choice. Well, hey, it's better than book promotion in every episode, so... <laughs> Speaking so, of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, John, we talked a bit about your mentors, Tony Robbins, Jason Capital. Now, I know I don't know about Tony Robbins, but I know Jason Capital, for example, dropped out of college, university, and I know that a ton of other successful entrepreneurs, social media giants have done the same. Why? Think... My question, basically, is why haven't you? That's a good question, actually. Um, really good. Um, I think, I mean, I was even thinking the other day, had I been at the stage that I am now, when I was first making this, this, the decision to um, to join in the first place, maybe I wouldn't have made that same decision. Um, maybe I actually wouldn't have, have gone in the first place. Um, I've, I'm already through the process now, and the thing is, I also do it now because I enjoy it. So because I'm doing sports science now, I enjoy the degree. For me, I find there's so much value in it as well. I'm learning nutrition, exercise. I've got psychology in there as well. And everything I'm learning, I feel like I can apply. Even if I don't use it for anything after, I'm applying some of these principles to my own life all the time. Um, so it's helping me in a way that's not just, oh, I'm going to get a degree at the end of it. It's teaching me an awful lot that I can apply outside that sport, just that sports scenario. And I enjoy it, um, so so it makes it kind of fun. This year's been different because I can't go in, but normally I love it when I can go in. I get lab experience, I get to do all of this stuff. So in a way, it's like well, an expensive hobby, but I enjoy it. It's teaching me a lot, and I do want a degree. That's the thing. Personally, I do want to have one and be able to say that I have a degree. Um, but if um, if you're not after a degree, the career you want you don't need a degree, or there's just one that, you, there's none that you're interested in, then I don't think you should be pressured into, into doing it. The world's changing and you need a lot more than, a, even for a job. So many people have a degree, you can't just go in and say, I have a degree, give me the job. You need to have something else that sets you apart now, and that's where you really you need to explore who you are first before you, you go on and think about a degree is going to get you everything. Absolutely. I think that the value of having a degree has gone down, especially in the last five years, but even more so like, over a longer period of time. Um, and I'm kind of in a similar situation to you. If I had the platform I do now, the skills I do now, would I have gone to uni? Probably not. But at this point, I'm, you know, I'm two and a bit years in, well, actually no, nearly three years in. So it's kind of like it's in my interest. I may as well finish it get that degree, have it under my belt, and then I can sort of focus fully, well, focus even more fully on the business and kind of growing in that sense. Right, so again, okay. John, good reason, sticking with his degree, that's fair enough. Jordan's being mentally weak again, and I actually was brave enough to drop <laughs> out, so uh, make of that what you will. So now I'm going to start cold showers <laughs> again, and I'm going to drop out of university tomorrow because Harry shamed me publicly. Yeah, well, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this on on here. This is the um, the shaming Jordan episode. <laughs> Literally, I'll just title it "Shaming Jordan." 
Um, yeah, no, Jordan gets bullied into changing his lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be this episode. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Um, okay, cool. That, that makes a lot of sense, though. And it's, I will it's say good that you kind well, of... Um, on that topic of kind of... It kind of fits into that, um, what I see all the time as well, about people saying, especially for people that aren't at uni, people that have already got their kind of job, their nine to five, there's a lot of stuff online like drop out, goal in on, on your own stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, that, yeah. That's a very extreme option. Same with dropping out of uni. If you're not sure yeah. what you want to do, sometimes sticking with it is, is the best option um, <laughs> at that point. And you can still do both as well. There is, there is time in the day. You just have to be willing to, to put the work in and use your time productively as well, not just fill your time. So having a nine to five or doing a degree is sometimes a way of buying you time or when it's a nine to five, giving you that um, that kind of financial foundation in the first place to go and start building something yourself, to actually invest and acquire the skills you actually need to start your own venture in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I want to be clear, I do actually fully agree with that. I'm not saying everybody please <laughs> drop out and certainly don't accuse me of being the motivation for dropping out because I'll deny I ever said it, we'll delete the recording. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's kind of like you were saying then, which is you can have your nine to five, which can be a job you don't like, or it can be your education, university, school, whatever it might be. It then becomes a question of what are you doing from five till nine? So from 5 p.m. to 9 yeah. p.m., you've got four hours before eating, sleeping, whatever else you do of an evening. So you've got four hours. You can use that time to build a business, to develop skills, take courses, do whatever the fuck you want to do with it. So, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with that, to be fair. All kind of joking aside and bullying Jordan aside. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, that's definitely, like, my experience. And I agree with what John was saying. Like, university can act as almost a buffer because at this point in my life, I don't need to worry about... I mean, I don't need to worry about paying the bills as such because I've got the student loan to fall back on, at least if you're going to university in the UK. So for me, I now have a three or four year period where I can focus on running a business. Maybe it's successful, maybe it's not. But in my case, I'm getting to a point now where my business is getting to the point where it's paying me a, like a living. And then when I leave uni, I won't need to have that pain of going through a full-time job and running a business for five, ten years because at that point my business is already established and has been for two, three years at that point. So I definitely completely get what you're saying and it's a case of looking at each individual case, deciding for yourself what is best for you, basically, regardless of outside pressure. Okay, cool. So one thing I wanted to kind of touch on is actually something I messaged you about earlier, John, and that is the huge fucking growth that you've seen on Instagram and TikTok in particular. Because I was looking at your, when I was doing the research for this interview, I, this episode, um, I was basically looking at your profile and looking at some of the past posts and you were getting about 50 likes on some of them. And then I was looking at your recent post and you're hitting consistently 400 some, I think one post was even 500 likes. How have you seen such massive growth in such a short period of time? Um, so quite honestly, there's um, the first bit I just want to touch on is, is outreach. Um, where I've been reaching out to so many more people um, I've, since uh, January, it's kind of started, I've built, been building relationships because I've prioritised that when I jump on calls more than anything, more than going in straight for a sale more than business I always go for that um, connection that relationship first so at the end of the day even if there is no value that, to really be provided there you've got another supporter and although it seems small these people have their networks then those people have their networks and so by having them on, on your side it helps already they increase a bit of engagement um, they start sharing your posts as well and that slightly widens the audience um, and just by doing that, I mean, I'm, I'm on so many calls every week um, that it does add up. You think you get even, even you get 10 calls a week. Let's say they all give you a like, that's 10. Every week you do 10, four weeks, that's an extra 40 people. I've been doing it, my outreach uh, massive since about um, January. So that's uh, nearly three months now. And I'm on often now it can be up looking at around 20 20 calls a week 
So that's probably one of the biggest things, that outreach, building those connections with people. Um, that's why it's not just a numbers game. But by building that, um, those connections, people actually want to interact with your content more. Um, the second thing is making sure stuff's kind of shareable. So on my page, I've done quotes, and I just that I think people would like um, inspirational, motivational. Just because people like to sometimes comment or share to their stories and stuff like that, that type of content really works. Stuff that people can share, stuff and stuff that invites people to actually engage with it, that tends to work um, really, really well. And with um, TikTok and stuff as well. So for Instagram, we've got reels. I've got so many reels on my page. Some of them stick, some of them don't. But all it takes with them is one, suddenly you see a bit of an increase, um, mainly for followers and stuff. So yeah. those at the moment, yeah, really pushing pushing them. And then TikTok, I think I'm driving a lot of traffic from there as well. Um, I had one viral video. Um, I think it got about 2 million views in the first 24 yeah. hours. It's now sat at 3 Jeez. and a half yeah. million views. Um, and I know that people have gone to my Instagram from there because I've had messages from people saying, oh, I like your content, I like this on TikTok, I came from TikTok. So I know people are being driven from there. TikTok, I think, is if you can funnel people into your Instagram from TikTok, I think at the moment that's one of the best ways. Put sometimes condensed versions of what you would provide on your Instagram on your TikTok. At the end of each video, in your bio, make sure to mention, like, follow for more or in, more on Instagram, more value on Instagram, and then you can try and drive traffic from there just purely because um, the reach on there is massive. You can start a new account, um, just get into the process of making content, getting yourself out there, start learning what sticks and what doesn't, and you can consistently start um, getting a lot of views on videos. I'm currently experimenting with mine. Um, and consistently now, I mean, some of them are set at about 200, but those videos take me a couple of minutes to make. Um, the ones mm. before they were that worked well were the top 10 videos, like 10 Reasons Why or te Top 10 Books. I think that one got about 10,000 views. So driving traffic from TikTok to your Instagram uh, can be massive for growth, just for, because um, by providing more value on your Instagram than you do on your TikTok, People come there for that for that extra value a lot of the time, but you have to prompt them to do it because they won't think straight away. Oh, I'm going to go and follow them on Instagram. You need to yeah. you need to put that idea in their head. Makes a lot of sense. Sounds like you've got a good kind of funnel, a good a good strategy in place to see that growth, and obviously it's worked because at the end of the day, like I said, you've seven eight times your engagement on your posts. So great job with that. Now, you say that you're getting on like 20 calls a week at this point, average anyway. How are you opening up these conversations without coming across as you just want to sell to them? Um, so my first message never uh, mentioned sales. Um, my process is always, so a lot of my outreach is actually on LinkedIn. Um, and on there, my process is I'll only message if they accept my connection request um, I think if you receive a message from someone that you're not connected with on there, you're probably going to ignore it because it seems salesy straight away. It seems like a bot automated messaging. So I only message when they've accepted, and then that first message is because I'm connecting with people that are kind of where I was, so in a way I, I know where they, where they are. I connect and I always ask, what got you onto this journey, onto this path? Most people are quite keen to share, especially if they have a story in the first place. They love sharing their reasons why. They love sharing mm. what they've been through. And because you're opening up with that, it then gives you the opportunity to share as well. So you're building that relationship from the start instead of um, instead of just being a, another salesman in their inbox. Um, the same goes for Instagram. I like to open up with that as well, ask people what um, what was their reason for starting, uh, how long they've been doing stuff for because people like to talk about their reasons why they absolutely love it and then you're talking on a personal level not a business level um, yeah. and once they hear your story quite often if it's similar they resonate with that and they start thinking wow yeah this person's not they know what this is like they know what this is like um, 
and then they sometimes think that you can help them before you've even sold anything um, and that's where I like to make sure I just deliver some free value straight away because um, at the end of the day I'm there to also make an impact not just to um, make a sale and that impact is going to leave an impression so if they need that in the, in the future or somebody that they know needs it they can then end up getting back in contact with you because you weren't the pushy salesman you were the one there building a relationship yeah that makes a lot of sense I'm finding something that really works for me recently is sometimes I'll send a message to someone and just ask them if they've seen a certain film um, and then because it seems so unrelated but then it's so easy once you've got that first message in and you've got that first response to then just direct the conversation towards why they're starting the business why they're doing x y and z um, and then you don't seem salesy um, I have had a lot of success as well going down the route of straight up asking them about their business and if you go down the route of asking them questions about their, their selves or their business or equally even asking them for help as in asking their advice, you know, what did you do when you first started your business kind of thing. People really, really want to share those sort of things, but nobody wants to speak to a salesman. Um, my strategy used to be I'm going to message you and say, hi, um, I see you're running this business. It's a great page. Really like it. I can help you do X, Y, and Z. Let me know if you're interested. And surprisingly enough, or not surprisingly, nobody was fucking interested in that at all because nobody wants to give their money away unless you've built up that all-important know, like, and trust factor, you've built that relationship. So absolutely, I think that's a really, really good strategy. I think um, as well what ties in with that is, I said about free value, and quite often what yeah. people do as well with that is they have their ebook or they have um, something like that that they just give out for free, just uh, a bit of advice that can help people. But even when you go about that, I think it's important to lead with, as you say, not coming in like a salesman, because even with that free offer, sometimes I get a message and it'll be like, um, oh, here's my free book, check it out. Um, yeah. Okay, I'd, I've never seen this person before. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense and you've not asked for it. If somebody, you get talking, if somebody's talking to me and then says, oh, I think you could really, um, this could really help you. I'll go, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll check that out. But if they push it straight away, then it's a, you, you start thinking, um, yeah, I didn't ask. I don't really know who this person is, and then you'll probably yeah. not read it. In fact, you're probably not even going to open that message. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a mistake I made as well. It was, I mean, like I I went for a phase of sending like one page reports on how people can grow their social media, and I had some interest. But the interest I got, I found they would read the report and then just not talk to me again. Um, and then a lot of people would be like, well, why are you sending me this report? Or they would just ignore the message. Like you need to build that relationship first and then later you can offer that free value in advance tailored to them. And then that can then develop naturally into a sales scenario. But yeah, build the relationships first. Don't focus on making the money, building, uh, getting the sale. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't work. People don't like that. So Cool. The other thing that I kind of want to talk about then is you've also got a Facebook group and also you're doing a video series through that, if I'm correct. So what do you, what did you make that group for? What is its purpose and why did you do it? So that group's currently the, the program I'm running, um, yeah. purely based around what I was saying at the beginning about building that authentic confidence, um, letting people discover themselves and have a group of people as well that are on that same that same journey um, because I think that's a big part of it as well you've got that accountability factor you've got people to share those experiences with the highs and the lows um, and that's what it's about it's about having that community thing as well not just doing this on your own you've then got a support network you've got people that can see you grow people to keep you accountable and the best part is is that they know about being authentic being real you can be real with these people then you can just keep mm. developing yourself and building that authentic confidence and then I absolutely make it on focusing so we focus on the internal confidence make sure you're comfortable inside dealing with that inner voice um, and knowing how to grow as well um, leveraging fear becoming used to it becoming comfortable with it so that if you're not living with a slight bit of fear 
then you're not living at all. You're in, you're living a life of comfort, not a life of growth. And that's where a lot of that confidence come, comes from. We focus on external confidence, just simple things, making sure you can fit in, keep active, making sure you, you can eat right. Because these small things, it's surprising how just when they say when you look good, you feel good. It's so true. When you think you look good, oh, you feel so much better. Before you go out, whether it's for a night out, for a meal, everybody gets dressed up. They want to look their best. Why? Because they feel good. They feel confident. So that's okay. what we're working on as well. And then we bring it to what's going on at the moment. Even things like this. To come on calls and stuff like this, you need camera confidence now as well. And I find that you need camera confidence to fully um, enjoy life now. Um, podcasts like this, if I couldn't talk on camera, if you guys couldn't talk on camera, we wouldn't be on here in the first place. When it comes to interviews now, most places are doing that. So even if you don't want loads out of life, you want your 9 to 5, you may have to have the confidence to come on a call and talk to an employer now. Um, with us being still in lockdown in the UK, if you want to connect with people, you need to do it online, you need to do it over a video call, and being used to seeing yourself on camera and being able to talk to a camera is a huge skill now, but it does take that yeah. confidence, and so that's why I like to tie it into developing it in front of the camera as well. Absolutely, and I can say from the video content you produced a few months ago even to the video content you're producing now your confidence has grown massively you're speaking with more clarity um and yeah it just sounds that much better and it makes the message that you're conveying that much more impactful thanks yeah i mean a lot of it comes from comes from my own story my own insecurity of talking on camera in the first place and that was probably one of the biggest challenges i've, I've overcome being able to take a camera and, and film yourself, not even on calls as well, to the point now where yeah. when I'm filming my content, I'm not talking to anyone. It's me and a camera. You don't get feedback or anything like yeah. that. Feedback Absolutely. It's so easy. I like it. Being on here now, I say something. I've got the two of you there. Give feedback, make a comment, ask a question. It's natural. It's conversation. Making content... Um, it is harder. Weird. You get, you get to, yeah. to do that. I honestly feel like um, it's a huge release. It feels so freeing being able to take your phone out and just talk. Um, there's some kind of just power in it, and being able to do that and just start talking and letting it flow, um, mm. it's an amazing skill. And I think it, being able to do it really helps with your confidence when it for for us comes into business. Um, it allows you to connect with your audience more as well in that kind of way. Sounds fantastic, and I definitely agree. It's so weird talking to a camera initially. Um, like I used to get really, really nervous talking in front of a camera. Like I've never really been nervous talking to people as such, apart from you know, certain people, but I've never been like nervous sweating or, or stuttering all the time. But then when I started recording video content, all of a sudden I'm stuttering, I'm nervous. I had to do about 100 takes on a video. It would take me an hour to make two videos, and it's it was so alien to me um but through doing it more now like now i can blast out 10 videos in an hour and it's not a problem because i hardly need to do any retakes because it's just that much easier and that just comes through repetition like you've just repeated the same process over and over and over again i've done that harry i know you're doing that and have done that in the past as well so we're all just getting better and better through repetitions um as jason capital says you need to work on that muscle build that muscle just like you're in the gym yeah, yeah that's also what it is. It's is is just uh, once you've done it that first time, that fear is technically gone. You've done it. You already yeah. know you can do it. Then yeah, it's just yeah. that process of um, improve, improve, improve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What was you going to say, Harry? Uh, I think case uh, Jason Capital used the term kaizening, constant, gradual yeah. improvement, consistently. Um, on that topic, yeah, it's exactly how I kind of help with social anxiety coaching in particular which is you just get enough repetitions in your brain of the thing that scares me hasn't killed me. Oh, so what am I scared of? I'm not going to die. Fine. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I'm willing to jump out of planes again. Um, <laughs> literally like gradual desensitization is the actual scientific literature on it. So it's absolutely valid. Um, yeah. What I was curious about though, is you said kind of look good, feel good, but it also right at the beginning, you said you don't like fake it until you make it. 
So I was curious, where do you kind of stand on the idea, given that your body tells your mind how to feel and your mind tells your body how to behave, of kind of saying to somebody, right, before you go out clubbing, for example, consciously with effort, go stand up straight, take up a bit more space, have open body language, etc. Is that not kind of faking confidence? Would you not say it's kind of faking it until you're making it in that kind of context? I think, um, yeah, you have like a good point there where um, for me, I wouldn't quite count that as, as faking it. As you say, with like building that uh, muscle up, confidence ultimately, nobody's technically born confident. Some people have an upbringing that, that um, lets them build that confidence from the start, but confidence can work as that kind of muscle as well. And you just need to start practicing and things like that body language, they're a great, great way of having that um, like physiological factor in there, that physical factor to help um, the inner processes, that reaction that the inside has when you do things like that. I think at the early stages, being able to implement a few things like that as well really does help. And I don't know, I wouldn't quite count it as faking it because you're not becoming a whole new person or a different person. It's just um, a way of developing, a way of improving who you are and trying to become the best version of you rather than becoming um, just a different person altogether. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Good answer. My kind of last question then for you is what are your plans for the future? Like at the moment, you've got your Instagram, you've got your TikTok, you're growing a steady following, you've got your clients. Where is the future of John Bates going? Um, and all honestly, what I hope to do is over the next year get my um, uni stuff out of the way. And what I really want to do is I want to be able to get get deep, get personal with people, work one to one with clients, really diving deep into insecurities, overcoming them, and really inspiring a generation of young men that feel comfortable and confident enough to start living life on their terms, to start making decisions that benefit themselves. Instead of living in constant fear, it's difficult now because you think you're living up to so many expectations. But what I want to do um, is inspire a generation of young men that will feel comfortable enough to go out there and actually just do what they want and actually enjoy life. Stop putting so much pressure and <laughs> trying to live up to these, these unrealistic expectations and just take time to enjoy life and enjoy the process as well. Sounds like a fantastic plan. Harry, do you have any more questions for John? Not for John, but I do have something I want to say really quickly, which is obviously this is going up on YouTube, etc. Comment down below and let me know. Just say the word yes. If in terms of the seminars and stuff that I've got plans coming up in 2022 and 2023, etc. with similar kind of things you're doing, mindset coaching, relationship coaching, confidence in, in, um, in general. If you think that John who we teach very, very similar things and we almost agree on absolutely everything, but we teach it very differently. So you teach in a way that's socially acceptable and you could tell somebody's parents about it. Whereas <laughs> I kind of teach in a way that you kind of deny ever hearing my name existing. So we have kind of very different approaches, even though kind of what we're teaching is fundamentally very, very similar. I just swear a lot more on the process and I kind of shout at people a bit more. So if you are actually interested in kind of seeing a lot more of John, specifically in kind of the regal summer that's coming up over the next kind of couple of years, let us know so we can book him now before he, he blows up even more and we have to pay <laughs> millions to get him to appear as a attendance fee. So let us know. Yeah, absolutely. That'll make our life way easier. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you do comment yes down below if you want to see that happen. John, do you have anything else you want to kind of touch on or ask or, or bring to the conversation? Um, no, I mean, I've enjoyed being on. Uh, thanks for having me on here. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think um, what I said a minute ago that, about what my mission is, I think um, if anyone leaves the video with taking anything away, it's just to, yeah, don't be afraid to take time to discover who you are and just start following your passions and, and making decisions that benefit you before benefiting other people. Um, it's your life, it's not for somebody else's. So who cares what you do? You do what you want to. Stop stop caring so much about what other people think. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great message to leave on. And thank you so much for coming on, John. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And I'm really, really excited to see 
where you take your business in the short and even the long term because I see big, big things coming from you. So now thank you everybody who's been watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Remember, drop a yes down below if you want to see John appearing in future Regal seminars and you want to see more from John. And also make sure you comment down any extra questions you might have for John, me, or of course, Harry. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, John, for coming on. It's been great chatting with you and we'll see you guys next week.